In this video, we are going to dive into using Lambda from AWS, and we're gonna use the serverless framework for it, which is a great combination, super simple to use, and extremely powerful. So if you're not familiar with Lambda, it's this really cool new paradigm that provides functions as a service. You don't manage servers, you don't manage scaling servers. Instead, you provide AWS with your functions and they schedule those across servers and you pay for the amount of time they run and you pay for the amount of requests they receive. So let's go ahead and look over at their pricing. Basically with Lambda, you get a million free requests per month and 400,000 gigabyte seconds of compute time per month. So what that equates to is the more memory you want your function to have, the less free seconds of running time per month you have. So if you're doing Node.js, which we're gonna do in this example, then your server will not be running all the time. You'll provide it a Node.js function and that function will execute whenever it's triggered. The trigger could be an HTTP request. The trigger could also be something like, hey, an image arrived in an S3 AWS bucket. Let's go ahead, run our Node.js process and resize those images and then it's done. We're not paying for it all the rest of the time. It could also be a schedule job that runs every two minutes or every day or something like that. Functions as a service is an extremely useful paradigm that in a way that solves problems very easily that would otherwise take a lot more involvement to solve. So here's a use case for how much you'd actually pay. Uh, if you had a 512 megabyte memory function and it ran 3 million times a month and each time that's about one second, you're looking at $18 to handle those 3 million jobs. So that's a really cool pricing structure. Uh, it's, it saves a lot of money in certain use cases and gives you a lot of flexibility. So what I've done is I've signed up for a brand new AWS account. And now all I need to do is have Node.js installed on my machine. And you can do npm install g for global serverless. So serverless will be installed on my machine now. There we have it. And now I can go serverless create. And this will not work. It's going to say, hey, you have to give me a template. Are we doing AWS Node.js, Python, Java? So in this case, I'm going to do AWS Node.js dash T for template and give it the template I'm going to use. So there we have it. We've now created a template. Let's go ahead and close this out. Don't save. And so this is my function that I'm providing. I'm gonna leave this as is for now. If you've done any kind of Node.js anything, this should look decently familiar. Basically, whenever our trigger event happens, it's going to run this function. And we're gonna have all the event information, which would be, hey, was this an HTTP event? If so, what path, what parameters, what was the post data, all that. And then we can send back a response. And then we also have this serverless YAML, which configures the function. So. They give us a lot of commented out stuff. You don't really need most of it. All you have to do really is change your name. So we'll call this Lambda test. And then we're gonna leave the provider as is, Node.js. And you can see all this other stuff. You can configure its access privileges within AWS. If you're used to AWS, you know what that all means. And you can give it custom environment variables if you want some including and excluding rules. And then here's the stuff that's actually important, your events. So let's go ahead and uncomment some of these. Let's go ahead and snatch an HTTP event here. That's the one we wanna use. We're gonna have this thing fire on HTTP events. You can see also, it's very easy to have this thing run on a schedule every 10 minutes, that's easy to read. It could run on S3 bucket changes. So whenever a file gets uploaded to an S3 bucket, say an image, let's go ahead and resize that image to all of the sizes that we need. Lots of great things you can do with that. And that's it. Let's go ahead and kill all the rest of this. Just make sure it's nice and clean. And that's my configuration for my function. Can do a little bit of white space cleanup here. And we're good to go. Now we're ready to deploy it. All I have to do is get some credentials from AWS so I can actually deploy this. So I'm gonna go to my security credentials and you'll see I get a warning that there are better places to do this by creating an IAM user with limited permissions. But for now, for this example, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, this totally works. Uh, these keys will just have access to my entire AWS account. So in a lot of use cases for a lot of companies, that's way too much access. You wanna create users with limited permissions. Uh, so there we go, I'm gonna copy that access key and I'm going to go serverless config credentials 
And then I'm going to do provider AWS key. There's my key and my secret key. That's configured. You can see they stored it in user slash dot AWS credentials. I can cat that file and there it is. That's the file that it created for me. So if you've already configured your AWS CLI, this step has already been done for you. I can either download that key file or close it and I'll never be able to see those keys again. So now what I can do is I can simply go serverless deploy. Okay, there you have it. That took right about 60 seconds and it created my service and gave me an HTTPS endpoint. Let's go ahead and click on it. And there you have it. There's my message, my function ran, and this is the response. You can see over here in the handler that my response is the message and then the entire event. So here's the entire event. I got the path, I got the method, the headers, all that stuff, everything it would take for me to actually act on this HTTP event. So instantly within seconds, I have a service up and running. Woohoo, that's super great. Uh, so now I can go ahead and make some changes. Let's just make this V1.0. I've got the service up and running. Now I can just run serverless deploy again. Okay, there we go. That took a lot less time this time around. It took about 20 or 30 seconds. Now I can go ahead and refresh my endpoint. And there we go. My message is version 1.0. And the other great thing about this is you can real time create as many stages as you want. I can go stage uh, production. Let's say what I've been working on now is considered the development stage. Well, now I can create a production stage and this is going to send my code out to a production environment. It's the exact same thing, but I'm going to get a different URL for it. So while that's deploying, let's come in here and let's add another function. So we have our hello function. Let's go ahead and configure a different function here. Let's call this one image resize. And you can see that my path right here was slash users slash create. Let's just make it a regular slash now. And then let's make this a slash image resize. So now we have two paths. Right now they're both pointing to handler.js hello method, which is the handler.js hello method. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this. We'll call this image resize. And let's say we're gonna do something completely different. We're going to post an image up here. It's gonna resize that image and the response will be the new image. So we'll just pretend that this happened and we'll say resize your image resize your image. So that's image resize, handler image resize. And now we're good to go. You can see my production deployment already happened and I have this new URL here. So here's my production URL and my deployment, my development URL. So let's just go ahead and run another serverless deploy. Okay, there we go. That took a couple seconds again. And you can see that we now have two different functions. We've got our dev function and our image resize function, or we've got our home function and our image resize function. So I can go here and then I can go image resize and resize your image. It called a completely different function. That function could have been a completely different file uh, or that could be a completely different serverless project altogether if that's how we wanted to configure it. So if I go over to production, you can see there is no root. I can't go just slash. That's going to say missing authentication token, which means that does not exist. So then I could deploy that to production as well. And then I'd have both of those functions on production. So I know I really flew through that, but basically in a matter of a couple minutes, I have created a dev and a production environment. This could totally be a REST API. This could be a lot of other things. Let me go over here to Lambda now and show you that these functions have been created. I now have three functions, but I'm not paying for them at all because they're not executing. I'm only going to pay for them as they execute, and I'm only going to pay for the execution time. So it's a really great paradigm, a really, really cool paradigm, um, and it's a lot of fun. I'd encourage you to mess around with serverless and Lambda when you have some free time. It's really going to stretch your imagination on exactly how your web apps can work. 
So that's it for serverless and Lambda. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead, thumbs up, subscribe. You'll get notifications whenever I come out with great new videos and have yourselves a great day.